So Raf, I want to ask you a question. So I was once at a keynote up in Nelson and this incredible uh, duo from University of Canterbury came along and modeled the AF-8. And I was like, well, this sounds like the most amazing new aircraft that yes, was uh, developing. Yeah, supersonic know? flights to London. <laughs> yes, that'd be nice. <laughs> Wishful thinking. <laughs> and in fact, it was the Alpine Fault. And I understood from all the research that it goes off every 300 years, and there's proof of that. And we're about 30 to 40 years past the due date of it going off. So they modeled it and said these are the possible outcomes. And at one point they said that the pressure and intensity of it would be a thousand times that of the Christchurch earthquake, which I was here for and that was shocking. So I thought, ooh, okay, I'm a little bit back into my old ways of earthquakes are back then, we've moved forward, that'll not happen again in my lifetime. But actually the statistics show that in the South Island and New Zealand, it's probably gonna happen in the next 50 years, 75% chance it'll happen in the next 50 years, likely in my in your lifetime. So I'm starting to think at a community level, what will I do, what will I do for my family, what will I do for the people around me, you know, how are we gonna respond, what's it gonna look like from an electronic, uh, you know, FPOS machines will go down, I won't be able to run business online, a lot of local people will be pushed out of homes and businesses. So I'm thinking, I can't deal with that all myself, like, to think about it overwhelms me. So I'm thinking, okay, we need leadership here. We need people working together in this whole idea of being this civic responsibility. So as the leader of the Opportunities Party, what do you think we should be considering? How do you think we should respond? <laughs> oh my gosh. I think, you know, going back to what you said, that it, it's almost too big for people to think about. And I think one of our challenges as humans is that preparing for stuff. So essentially I'd say disaster preparedness is absolutely critical building resilient systems that can withstand shocks, uh, preparing for a community-wide response. And a lot of this stuff, you know, again, came out of the earthquakes, the SVA, and I, mean, I can talk about some of the details, but we have, to, we have to sort of somehow either convince ourselves or show that some kind of evidence that we can cope with this. Because if you say something is too big, people actually will just switch off and go, oh, well, there's nothing I can do. We'll just see what happens. It's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world if we prepare properly. So one of the things that we did at the Student Volunteer Army, it was 2013, Hurricane Sandy in the States. Can't, might not be the exact year, but that was a big shock to you know the East Coast of the States. And one of our team had met a guy, I think actually in Japan, where there was the earthquake after the Christchurch earthquake, and, and, and Sam Johnson and Jason Pemden, some of the team went up there. And this, this guy worked for an outfit called Global Dirt, which was something like disaster and reconstruction team or something. And he called up the guys and said, hey, would you want to, I'm going up to New York, do you want to come and help out? So I thought, well, that's a good idea. So I said, like, who wants to go? So two of the guys, Jackson and Jason, said, well, they'll go. I said, right, I'll get some money for you. And I actually <laughs> called up Bob Parker's office and said, can you fly these boys out? And they did. They came up with five grand. Put them on the plane, literally within about two days. Met this guy. He's a sort of ex-Marine guy. And they spent two weeks working on the recovery for Hurricane Sandy. Now, two things came out of that. One, they ended up working with the National Guard there using the systems that they developed post Christchurch earthquake, which was essentially an online platform for booking what was going on. Standard stuff now, but essentially it was one of the, one of the students from the University of Canterbury doing his, his computer science degree, knocked up this system where you would book a job and then people could see when they'd done the job. So it's like someone calls up, can you come and take the silt out of my house or do whatever? They'd book it, send the job out to somebody you know, so this is, yeah, so this is a guy just doing his degree. This is a great thing about young people and students, you know. And anyway, they took that tech to, the, to there um, in the States where you had these huge volunteer groups and they'd all come with their massive marquees and set up. And then they'd all troop down the same street and knock on the same doors. Do you need X, Y, and Z? It's so that guy said, actually, just have one system. And then when you go and visit a house, ask them, what do you need? Is it water? Is it power? Is it food? Is it blankets? And then you just code it in and then the deliveries can be made so it's more efficient. So they ended up working with the National Guard. Anyway, so they came back and that was great. And um, one of the things they brought back with them was an idea from the, the guy at um, the Global Dirt organization was that uh, they, have this, they had this incredible box that they carried around and you opened it up and it had a satellite 
system and it had a sat phone and it had solar power. So essentially it was a mobile comms unit. And I said, geez, well, why don't we have them in every community in the city? And to be honest, everywhere in key centers around New Zealand. And we sort of looked into it, but you know, nothing, we couldn't get, you know, again, couldn't get government to look at it or, or whatever. Anyway, what happened during Cyclone Gabriel? All the power went out. There was no comms. There was no comms even in hospitals, in courts. And I'm How saying, I'm saying, do these people not have sat phones? Wow. No. You know, so you talk about the power going down, things like FPOS, that's absolutely critical. So when we talk about disaster preparedness, there's a lot of stuff that we can be doing at that, say, resilience level. You know, every marae in the country with a backup comm system, you know, community centers, hospitals, you know, courts, police. Now, of course, the police, police had them. But you remember, comms was a big deal in the recovery from the cyclone. So you speak to the tech companies, you know, Spark, Vodafone, Two Degrees. The, the personal bit, which I think is really important, is that, yeah, as much as we don't think this stuff's gonna happen or it's a hassle or it's a redundancy cost, you know, you've gotta have a bag packed. I've got grab bags all over the place. I just like, because I'm such a hoarder, I just keep kind of, okay, I'll have that and then I'll put this battery pack in and. A one square meal which will be like eight years old but probably still you can still probably eat it if i think there's some us like their meals ready to eat ration thingies like you could they last 100 years or something I mean, <laughs> it's weird stuff I, I don't know what's in it um you may die from the consumption well, of it i mean but... you know in an emergency so you have your personal stuff ready um and even other things like tools like mm. good toolkits but you know your community and I think the thing about this civic service program and what I would implement as you know, leader of the Opportunities Party and all the rest of it, is a civic service program where everyone is trained. One of the things we offer first aid, everyone in the country has done a first aid course. Now that is a huge investment in basic social and civic resilience, you know? You know, you, you can dress a wound, you can set you know, a break, things like that that has a huge impact in terms of personal recovery. You know, driving lessons, making sure everyone actually has, knows how to drive because we still, you know, people still drive vehicles. Um, the, the conservation, you know, the, the basics in water management. You know, if, if we train everyone in, in that kind of civic and kind of civil response, so I call it the four C's. So it's essentially, I hope I can remember them all. So like community engagement, conservation, civics and civil defense now that's they're all really important and they're all entwined but if you want people to have a sense of citizenship imagine that when you become a citizen or you grow up here you all do this same course and that brings everyone together there's a sense it's, of belonging yeah but it's a unique thing yeah. it's a unique thing it doesn't have to take up huge amounts of time you can do it you know the odd afternoon here and there and it's funded then you create this idea of a citizen, that no matter what happens anywhere, people can respond. They can go and look after other people if they're okay. They can administer basic first aid. Um, they can, you know, build shelters. I mean, you know, we've been through it here and there are plenty of people who were living under tarps and using buckets for toilets. And I mean, I remember actually after the earthquakes, I did some, in the very early days, I did some toilet deliveries well, chemical toilet deliveries with the army. And, you know, I remember being kind of shocked at, you turn up at this house and this old couple were there and they'd been on their own for like two or three days. This was right after the earthquakes and no, um, you know, sewerage was off and they're using buckets and they're old people and they were kind of on zim. And it was just like, oh my God, this is grim. But that's the reality of what happens. I mean, we see it on the TV shows all the time. Um, there was a great show recently about the Mercy Hospital um, experience in New Orleans, where they were cut off for five days. It only takes basically three days and society collapses. Yeah. So that, that initial response is critical. How do we um, allow people to buy stuff? You know, so a system for, I remember as was um, our local supermarket, I think Fenelton New World. Yeah, they were doing, they just got the book out. He said, right, everyone here basically shops here all the time. So we'll take your name, loaf of bread, Pine of milk, well, you know, that, that type of stuff. And that's trust and that's community building. Yeah. Now, if you've got strong communities, that trust system works. When trust goes, 
you will have looting, yes. you will have gangs. Which we did see a bit will, of that too. Yep, you will. And, we, and there was a bit of that up in the Hawke's Bay, yep. particularly where you have, you know, gangs with guns. They will immediately go, well, if, no, if there's no police around, we're now in charge. So without a strong community response, um, you've got problems. So I guess to summarize, you know, disaster preparedness is critical at a kind of systems level. So yes, like your sat phones, you know, your comms, um, backup power, you know, solar around the place. But the civic preparedness is critical. And the only way we can do that is by um, enhancing our sense of ourselves as citizens, because that's how we're going to come together and look after each other.